Looking his way, Traylon Burks separation. Bingo. Burks has it! Look out for Traylon Burks! Williams turns the corner, look at this! He's gone! And is downfield, and a diving catch is made! Hey everybody, Dave Archer again here, at Falcon Radio Network, and this is where we're going to take a look at some of the players we think could affect the Falcons in the draft, certainly early in the draft. Today, we're going to look at the wide receivers, and why not? Atlanta doesn't have a lot of those guys under contract right now. We've been able to sign a few guys recently. Uh, Terry Fontenot's done an amazing job of securing some guys to help play that position. But can you find a big timer? Let's take a look at some of the guys that are out there. Garrett Wilson is the first guy that comes to mind. He's six feet, 183 pounds, out of Ohio State. Many have him ranked near the top. I would say the same. He's an outstanding route runner with top end speed. He ran 439 at the combine. It's a kid that uh, has the ability with run after the catch, which is important nowadays. But uh, I think that the ability to run routes and then explode out of routes the way he does. Take a look at the tape on Garrett Wilson because what he does is he catches the football and then it's a couple steps and he's at top end speed. I love that. Not a lot of wasted movement from him. Now, he is a little bit light in the rear end, if you will. This guy only weighs 180 pounds and you would step into the National Football League a little bit more physical every game, not just a couple of games for an Ohio State, every game, very physical. But Garrett Wilson right at the top of the class here at 183 pounds, a six footer out of Ohio State. Number two for me is Drake London. Drake London is a guy that's getting a lot of notoriety. He only played seven games a year ago. He broke his ankle in a game, uh, again, I think against Arizona. Uh, he's a big kid. He's, he's kind of the opposite of what, uh, uh, what Wilson is. This is a guy that's six foot four, 215 pounds, doesn't have a lot of top end speed, but if you're talking about 50-50 ball, there's nobody better than Drake London to go get the football, the USC Trojan. He goes, he high points the ball extremely well, a good route runner, has some technician attached to him, but I think that the top end speed is where you get a little concerned with, with Drake London, and then the fact that he only played seven games a year ago and he's coming off a broken ankle. Jamison Williams, the outstanding player at Alabama. Now, how healthy will Jamison Williams be? All those that followed football, Georgia won the national championship. Jamison Williams hurt his knee in that game, an ACL tear in that game. So there's some rehab for Jamison Williams to get back in time to play in the regular season. But when you take a look what the dude could do, he is the best in the league or best in the country yards after catch, 9.3 yards after catch. Uh, he is a home run waiting to happen top end speed, he's got all that stuff, run after catch. And I thought it was interesting, if you watch the Cincinnati game, remember John Menchie, his running mate at, at uh, wide receiver, got hurt against Georgia. And he had to assume the role of maybe a little bit more of the possession pass catcher, he did that. I thought that was a, an interesting transition for a guy that had been a speed guy and a home run guy. Traylon Burks, uh, this is the guy that, that might fit what you're looking for from a run after the catch guy, multifaceted dude, 6'2", 215 pounds, did not run well at, his, at the combine, which had a few alarms go up, but he did an outstanding job at Arkansas. He was really their only threat on the outside, yet he still had monster numbers. The guy got 65 balls for over 1,000 yards. He had 11 touchdowns, and he also sprinkled in the ability to run it. And don't discount the Debo Samuel factor here. A guy that can do a lot of things, not just catch the football, line up in the slaughter outside, but can you move him around like the 49ers did with Debo Samuel? There's a lot of teams looking for those type of players. Traylon Burks is one of those kind of guys that can do that. Big physical dude, but where's that top end speed, you kind of wonder. And the other Ohio State wide receiver, Chris Olave. Chris Olave, a little bit more experienced than Garrett Wilson, Got a little bit, a little bit more uh, bank of work to look at, but they're very similar players. He's six feet, 187 pounds, excellent route runner. I don't know that his top end speed is as good, although he did run a good time at the combine, as it is Garrett Wilson. But they're very similar players, very competitive, excellent route runners, and good technicians. But guys that are certainly going to be available when you start talking about in the first round. A couple of other guys to look for. We I mentioned John Menchie, Johan Dotson out of Penn State is another guy to potentially look at. George Pickens out of George is a very interesting guy to me. Pickens doesn't have the numbers and the gaudy numbers to, to look at and say, oh wow, he had a big catch in the championship game against Alabama. He was hurt all year long before that game, uh, but had a really good freshman year. George Pickens, a big kid, 6'3", 195 pounds. Watch for Pickens to be available in the second round and maybe a steal for somebody there. Uh, Alex Pierce is another guy that I think is a winner. He's a, maybe a limited in speed, but a big kid, 6'3", 211 pounds out of Cincinnati. 
who has the ability to catch the football in traffic. Just a couple of guys to sprinkle in. Uh, there's a number of receivers in this draft. I think Atlanta can get rich on wide receivers in the second and third round. Not, don't necessarily have to squeeze the trigger at eight, but there's some good ones sitting at eight as well.